What's up, you guys? Hi. So I'm Catherine, host of the At A Total Loss podcast. What I'm going to do right now is basically break down um, the introduction episode, which I know was super short, but just provide a little bit more detail about that, me, my background and all of that. So, you know, kind of set you up for what you're going to hear on the podcast to follow. So basically, again, my name is Catherine. I live in Atlanta, Georgia with my husband. And we had a beautiful baby boy named Brody this past January on the 18th, he was born. So we're in the year 2022 at the time of this recording, seven and a half months ago. So I'm going to go ahead and just let you know that this podcast came out of pretty much the darkest time of my entire life. I didn't know what to do with the sadness. I didn't understand what was happening to me. I didn't know what happened to Brody. And so I reached out probably soon after his death, maybe like two weeks to people who had um, connect, uh, my friends and my family had connected me with some other lost moms. And I reached out and I needed to kind of figure out how I was going to do this. I mean, it was excruciating. You guys know. Um, So I called... I had called up a couple. Um, They kind of coached me through the first couple of months. I finally started to come up for air around month four. Um, I went on a trip, a phenomenal trip to Egypt, which was life-changing. And I came back and kind of was like, guys, you know, your conversations saved my life. Maybe if someone else could hear them, you know, just two crazy chicks talking about the death of their children um, maybe they would hear something that might help them. You know, we talk about everything in this podcast. We talk about our babies, which is number one. We love talking about our babies. This is how we honor them. We also talk about medical things, our treatment during pregnancy, after pregnancy, finding answers to their deaths, how we cope, what grief feels like, how friends and family react, um, and kind of like what this new version of us is like. Now, I gravitated towards women who try to find the light try to find the light and live life happily without guilt in order to honor their babies, which was really important to me. I felt that I was spiraling into this darkness and that doesn't work for me. So I gravitated towards women who still like to laugh, who still like to have a good time, who still like to joke, who still kind of have some dark humor, who honor their babies by living their best life. Um, Now that worked for me. And I decided that I should just record them. So I hit them up. I live in Atlanta. So the three girls that I'm the closest with live in Atlanta. And I just threw them on a microphone at a podcast recording studio that I found. And I was like, hey guys, I'm going to do this. They're like, let's go. So, and then it kind of evolved. Um, You'll see some other episodes for non-lost moms, but they're really huge part of this journey. All I'm doing guys is like, just telling you my story. That's it. I I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I know we're all different. We all handle things differently. But this worked for me and I hope that anybody could, anybody can listen to the conversations and maybe pick up something that like resonates with them to let you know you're not alone, that you're supported, that you're weird, but you're not the only one that's weird. This is weird. This is a weird life. It's a horrible life. It's, it's excruciating to lose your child. It's out of order, but we have to keep going. That's the thing, you guys, like it doesn't kill us. This sad, this sad doesn't kill us. We just have to figure out how to put one foot in front of the other and continue to live this life and maybe even enjoy it. It's crazy. I literally thought my sadness would kill me, you guys. It really did. It felt like it could. And sometimes it still does. But with the help of these conversations, some different types of therapy that I'm going to talk about, finding answers to what happened to Brody, finding answers about my own situation and health, making moves to, to continue to try to have a living child, you know, relationships with people, my closeness with my husband, my marriage, all of these things are part of this journey and I've been going through it. And I just decided to throw the podcast out there. It's my way of honoring my son every single day. That's all I want to do is honor him every single day, you know, and until I see him again. And it helps me work through my grief because I still have days, you guys. I mean, we always will. We still have days and moments. And listening to these, even myself, listening to them over really help. And um, 
giving also giving lost moms a platform to speak about their babies because it's important. And at some point we kind of don't get to talk to about them that much. So, so here we are the, at a total loss podcast is out there. And, um, what I've done is put, I'm putting them up on the, this YouTube channel, and then they'll be followed by a breakdown about what we talk about, because we talk about a lot of different things. And I guarantee you some of these things, like you probably have not heard of, or you have, and you know, don't think anybody else did. Yeah. We're talking about a lot of stuff. So that's what's happening. Now, a little background for me. Um, I grew up in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I grew up, um, going to school, obviously in the Catholic school system, but also was a dancer. I practiced and I trained and I did competitive dancing. And then in high school, I was a cheerleader. And then after that, I decided that I didn't want to quit, you know, dancing. So I went to the university of Florida and auditioned for the basketball team, dance team, not the basketball team guys on five, one, there's no chance they be the ball girl, but, um, I danced, uh, for the men's basketball team as a dazzler at the university of Florida. And then after that, I, uh, auditioned for the Miami Heat basketball in Miami and became a dancer. After that, I got the bug. I got an agent. I went to Los Angeles and I did, I was a dancer there and an actress. I did commercial work. Um, I did music videos and I did movies and commercials and I did improv comedy. I did a bunch of stuff and figured out what I was good at and what I wasn't. While I was out there, I booked a Zumba commercial or a Zumba DVD series, a, a dance series, a dance fitness series. And that got me into dance as a workout. So I studied and got certified as a group fitness instructor, moved back to Florida, um, ended up getting attached to a bar program that I taught. And then I went to uh, Georgia and opened up the first Orange Theory Fitnesses, uh, became director of trainers. So I really, I really loved that. I was on a microphone all the time and I, I really liked it. And then, uh, well, I'm missing a part. I worked for the Miami, Mar the Florida Marlins and the Miami Marlins as an MC. So I was always on a microphone on a big screen, playing games with the fans and doing contests and announcements and just kind of improv -ing. It was super fun. And I did that for a long time. When I moved to Atlanta, I did that for the Braves. So if you're ever in a Braves game and you walk through the plaza, I was out there, I was on camera and I was talking on a microphone. So I really loved it. So my point is, is that I've always kind of been on a, on a microphone um, and uh, as a host. So I work as um, right now, I retired as a fitness coach, but I run my own concierge recruiting fitness company where I help fitness businesses find their, their top talent. You know, they're multi-unit managers, they're COOs, they're director of marketing, all that stuff. So I just know fitness and I love it. And if you want to talk business, find me on LinkedIn, <laughs> not here. <laughs> so, and I still work to this day. Work is actually kind of an outlet for me. And I really, I, I, I love my work and I run my own business so I can do my own hours. So if I'm having a griefy day, check out for an hour or so, which is good. Um, so I had a podcast in the works. I knew when I was pregnant that I wanted to be a full-time mother and being a contract worker, I wasn't going to get maternity leave. So I wanted to set myself up to be able to do things, but be full-time for Brody. Um, so I started a podcast interviewing fitness professionals in the space and what it's like to work in fitness. And I worked it all out. I worked with the planner. I worked with everything. And it was supposed to launch February 1st. So I realized that, you know, obviously Brody had passed on January 17th. And I went into labor on January 18th. He was born on January 18th. And I um, just said, going back to the previous life that I had was not going to work for me. I didn't know how to release a podcast that I shot pregnant. Like you can, you can see it in my face. Like, so... I kind of had done the layout for how to do this. I still don't know what I'm doing, and but hey, you know, here we are. So this is my contribution to my son and honoring him. So here we are. My pregnancy was unexpected, but it was wanted. It was exciting, and I was I was terrified. I didn't know what was going on with my body. I didn't know what was happening, but I do know that my sister and my best friend and all my other good friends all have three children. So I said, you know, they did it. I could do this. This is great. I researched a ton. I asked a ton of questions. I cleaned my entire way of life. So my food intake, my any sort of detergents or cleansers or makeup or hair products or nail polish, everything was toxic free. No toxins. I was really big on that. I exercised, I slept, I rested. Um, and I, I liked being pregnant towards the end there. I 
would have my showers at night and I would talk to my belly and talk to, well, at the time, we didn't know if it was a boy or a girl. We wanted to be surprised in hindsight. It's like, okay. Um, but I always knew it was a boy. I always knew, you know, mama knows. I would talk to him at night, have oils and non-toxic oils. Um, and just kind of, that was my time with him. Every morning I'd have cereal, loved cereal. He loved cereal. He'd flip around. He loved strawberries and bananas, would flip around. He flipped around so much that I called him Cirque du Soleil at night. I mean, it was wild. He kept me, he kept me up at night. And um, he, he was just, I just knew he was there. And I was, I was, I will tell you though, I was like so over being pregnant. I just wanted to meet him. I wasn't like glowing at one point. I was like, get him out. I want to meet this baby. I wanted to be a mother. I want this baby. My husband and I were so excited. We bought a new house. We were just so ready. His death was an absolute shock. My pregnancy was low risk, even though I was of an, um, over the age of 35, they did not consider me high risk. And I was at one of the biggest, I would say, um, OBG, OBGYN practices in the state, I would say. And a lot of people I know would go there. And I'd been going there for gynecology uh, appointments um, for like almost 10 years. So I was familiar with them. It was a big, it was a, it's a big practice and it was a rotating practice. So every time I went in, I saw someone different, a doctor or a nurse, I'm sorry, a doctor or a midwife. And I didn't have a, really a preference. I thought maybe midwife, but I didn't, I just, I don't know. I didn't really care. And I always took whatever information they had. The unfortunate thing is that, you know, I, I did, I was very aware of things and was very protective over him and they never talked to me about anything of importance. They never even said stillbirth was a potential outcome. They never said, you know, how are his, how's his movement? How are his kicks? Nothing, you guys, no, no mention of the placenta. And it was almost like they were super casual about my pregnancy. You know, it was like in and out. And I just, I was like, I don't know if I like this or not. And they were all wearing masks, which I get it is COVID, whatever. But I couldn't connect with anybody. I couldn't see smiles. They couldn't see mine. It was, it was crazy. So not the greatest experience, but then again, I mean, everyone around me was having healthy children. I didn't know one person that had a stillbirth. And I um, just was in complete and total shock. I mean, my blood pressure started going up in the third trimester to the point that I was getting a little concerned, but they didn't seem concerned. They just said, hey, if you if your vision goes blurry and your head starts hurting, call us. I was like, okay, well, none of that's happening. I was in like the high 130s, 80s over eighties, but nothing really that concerning. My 36 week appointment though, they did say that if this continues to go up, we're going to induce you at 38 weeks. Now, the weird thing is, is that now I think I was further along than they say, which we're going to talk about in these episodes. Mm -hmm. So basically, you know, my, his death was a huge shock then the spiral after, you know, being your first child and like we were fully stocked and ready for him. And um, the absence is severe. And I've done a lot of work and we're going to talk about all the things that I've done. I immediately said, you know, I just need to get my health in order. And then I had to mourn my son and I did significantly and I still do. Um, I have done different types of therapies. I have cleaned up my diet. I have laid off certain things that I know don't make me feel good. Um, I stay away from things that aren't good for me. Um, relationships have kind of dwindled that don't work anymore. Really amazing relationships have entered. I've done everything that I possibly can. And I think that um, I'm in a spot now where I am having moments, not days, and things are still really tough, but I've made a conscious effort to find the light and try to live this life as happy as I can with my son and mind. Um, we are trying to have a living child. So trying to conceive is a whole nother ball game, which we of course will talk about. Um, but I really want to talk about Brody and think about him as being the most beautiful thing that's ever happened to me. He died. It's tragic. It's horrible. It was preventable and it's maddening and it's devastating but he also changed me for the better. He's brightened up so many things that I never had any light on before. He's made me closer with my family and in my marriage, almost even closer to God. And we're going to have that conversation too, because that was a struggle. You know, everything 
falls apart when this happens. Everything, even the very fiber of who you are, the things that you believed before no longer hold true. They don't, nothing makes any sense. The order of events isn't parent loses child. Trying to wrap your brain around the magnitude of it, but also trying to take steps forward in honoring your baby and also grieving. It's, it's wild. I mean, and these are all the conversations that we're having. You're not alone in this. I'm here with you. I'm doing this. I'm still doing this. I will do this forever. There's going to be a wave of new experiences coming up. I mean, this is going to be the holiday season coming up. We just had football season start. I was so looking forward to that, having my baby there. And now all the holidays, I mean, I was big over the holidays. We did things over the holidays in prepare, preparation for him. It's going to get tough and it's always going to be tough. There's going to be milestones and things our whole lives. So, But we're in this together. You're not alone in this. And, and, and that's the only comfort that I can breathe, bring. I'm not here to fix anybody. I'm not here to say, you should do this and then you're going to be better. This is not what this is about. This is how we're going to get through this. This is how to get answers if you want them. This is how to find therapy if you want it. This is what you should do if you're looking to go this route or that route or not this way. Or, hey, the way that people are acting is normal. This happens to us. Like, you're not alone. This is all this is. And it's never going to stop. We're in this together forever. And that's kind of the comforting part. It's like I've made this huge community of people who I never knew existed. Did you guys know that sober, th this huge community existed? I didn't. I had no idea. And there's thousands and thousands and thousands of us and more. Even since I started this, I am connected with women who have lost and it's, I can't believe this is happening. And like, that's another thing. We're going to talk about prevention. We're going to talk about raising awareness to try to prevent. We're going to talk about what happens after, but also what happens before and also how we could try to help it not happen again for future pregnancies or even people that we know. We're talking about all this stuff again. I'm not here to fix it. I'm not here to make, tell you this is, a, you know, you're, you should be better. Grieve how you want to grieve. Do what you need to do. This is just to help you feel supported. Now I'm leaving comments on. If you guys want to comment anything or ask a question, I'm going to try to stay as dialed in as I possibly can and answer them. Anything of any hate, hatred or any sort of joking or mocking of this community, I will not stand for. Heads up. Um, this I'm um, protecting the hearts of those who are involved. It's really important that we do that. Um, you can find me on Instagram if you want to direct message me there at the Catherine Lazar. I uh, also have a website, katherinelazar.com. And my email is the Catherine Lazar at gmail.com. Catherine Lazar is taken. So I had to put a D in front of it, <laughs> but I'm, I'm always down to talk. I'm very open about what's going on. So as we go through each episode, I'll break it down and the things that we talk about, but you know, how I want to leave it is that my Brody was a beautiful blessing in my life. His death is tragic and I'm scarred absolutely forever. My heart is shattered forever, but he's beautiful. He was a wonderful pregnancy. I loved his little life and feeling that inside my belly and I want to talk about him all the time and how beautiful he is and all the wonderful things he's doing in my life. I'm here again for you if you need anything. And I'm here for your babies. I want to hear about your babies. I want to hear their birthdays, their names, and your favorite part of them. And I, uh, your favorite part about them and their little lives. And I just want you guys to feel comfortable in the safe space to connect. So with that said, thanks for listening. Um, episode, introduction episode is already up on this page. And then you'll see the rest of them in the breakdowns after that. So please feel free to reach out. And I'm sorry that you're here lost mamas, but I love that we've connected. Take care of yourselves.